Okay. For the next speaker, then we have Xingyang Yu from NIU who will tell us about 2D and equals 0, 1 gauge theories, pin seven orient folds, and triality. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me for the opportunity of giving the talk. <clears throat> Uh, today, I will tell you something about the uh, geometric engineering of the 2D minimally supersymmetric gauge theories and uh, the geometric interpretation of the newly proposed 0, 1 triality. So this is uh, based on two papers with uh, Sebastian Franco, Alessandro Minino, um, <laughs> and Ather Giranga. So one is already online, and the other one hopefully will be appear soon. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so first I will give you a very short introduction and motivation, and, and then I will talk about these building blocks of the zero comma one gauge theories, and then I will move to um, the geometric engineering of the zero one gauge theories, where we introduce a new geometric background in string theory, which we call spin seven omni fold. And then we will talk about uh, some examples of how to use this spin seven article to engineer or construct this zero comma one gauge theories and how this construction can give us a geometric interpretation of the zero one triality. And then we'll move to conclusions and some future directions. Okay, so 2D minimally supersymmetric gauge theories, it has only one real supercharge so it's zero comma one supersymmetry in 2D. Um, so actually this, kind of, so this class of theories is less studied compared to like 2D gauge theory without supersymmetry or with like enhanced supersymmetry. Um, but uh, still there's something uh, interesting in this kind of class of theories, which uh, is already known, okay? So recently there is a, infrared duality proposed by Sergei Gukov, uh, Dupay, and uh, Petrov, uh, uh, that is something very similar to the 4D cyber duality or to the 2D 0 comma 2 duality, if you are familiar with that. Uh, so the theories participating in this kind of duality or in this kind of infrared duality can be regarded as the real slices of the 0 comma 2 gauge theories in 2D. So this is kind of an idea like this uh, 0, 2 or 0, 1 correspondence, okay? So my goal today is to um, provide a, a method to geometric engineering uh, these 2D 0, 1 gauge theories. And then I will talk about uh, how this construction can give us the implementation of the 0, 1 triality and uh, how this um, geometric engineering can give a realization of these real slice ideas. So engineering QFT in string theory is always like, uh, usually provides like new perspectives for studying them, okay? While geometry or combining tautologies. So uh, one possible, uh, one po one like uh, most uh, celebrated setup is brains probing the singularities. So you can think of a brains probing a sing singularity, which maybe is a part of the club L geometry or some other special, Autonomy, geometry, maybe G2, maybe spin seven, okay? So uh, here are several examples. You can consider D3 bring probing club your four, four uh, sorry, probing club your threefold. This will be a generalization of the ADS5 CFT uh, correspondence, okay? This will give you an infinite class of 40 equal to one gauge theories. Or you can consider M2 bring probing club your fourfold. This will be a generalization of the ABGM theory, okay? And the starting point of uh, my talk today will be the D1 brains probing the club your fourfold. So this will give you 2D 0, 2 theories on the board volume of D1 brains. So before moving to the string theory construction, let's first uh, uh, see the uh, superspace formalism of the 0, 1 gauge theories. Uh, there are three kinds of supermultiplets in these gauge theories. Okay, so uh, the first one is the vector multiplet. It has gauge boson, and uh, only on shell degrees of freedom is a uh, uh, left moving Majorana wire fermion, so it's a real Fermi field. And there are two kinds of matter multiplets. Uh, the one is uh, one of them is called a scalar multiplet. So it has one real scalar, 
and one red moving my runner wire for me. And the Fermi multiplet is another matter multiplet. It has uh, only a left moving my runner wire for me as it's on shell degrees of freedom. And uh, for these kind of uh, theory, you can write down a super potential, okay, which is very similar to the zero comma two J term, or you can, or, or you can more, if you are more familiar with the 40 stuff, you can see this is um, something very similar to the super potential in the 40 equal to one theory, okay? It is an interaction between Fermi multiplet and scalar multiplets. Okay, here I use the index, the small a to denote different Fermi multiplets. And for each Fermi multiplet, you can write down a scalar function of the scalar multiplet and as uh, the coupling, as the coupling term between the Fermi multiplet and the scalar multiplet. Uh, uh, there is a very interesting infrared duality for zero comma one theories, which is called a zero one triality. It's a low energy equivalence between different gauge theories. It's very similar to the zero two triality, if you know that, or you can think of it as a, or the three type of cyborg like duality, which is very similar to 4D cyborg duality. Okay. So here is a, uh, like uh, the simplest example of zero one triality. Let's consider this zero comma one super symmetric QCD theory, where I have a SO gauge group and I have three flavor gauge groups where I denote as SO N1, N2, and N3. Okay, and I have flavor as a layer. So let me uh, introduce this uh, uh, quiver di diagram for you. Okay, here I use the quiver diagram to denote the matter content of my theory. So for every circle, for, for every uh, circle yellow node, I mean the gauge group. For every blue square node, I mean the flavor or the global symmetry group. Okay, for every black line connecting different uh, groups, I mean the uh, scalar multiplet. Uh, for every red line, I mean the Fermi multiplet. Okay, so you can see on the left uh, top uh, diagram, you have a SO and one plus N2 minus N3 over two gauge group. And with three flavor groups, you have two flavor uh, scalar fields. You have one flavor Fermi fields. And there, uh, and there is a gauge singlet Fermi multiplet between SO and one and SO and two. Uh, the Fermi field connecting, connecting the gauge group with a star, with a star label, that means a Fermi field transforming under the symmetric repetition of the SO gauge group, okay? And below the quiver diagram, I write down a super potential. So with quiver diagram and super potential, you, you can like 100% specify the theory you're talking about. And then, and the green arrow, green arrows between different quiver diagrams is the triality transformation between different theories, or you can see between different phases of this zero one SQCD. Okay, so every time you do the triality transformation, the gauge group is changing. Okay, it's follow the similar rule as as the cyborg duality, which you have the n flavor minus n color is the new rank of your gauge group, okay? And then the super potential is keeping in the same form, but the field content is transforming accordingly. You can think of this um, transformation as a, a 120 degree rotation of the quiver diagram every time you do this triality transformation. And in the end, we found that if, I, if you do three steps, of the transformation, you go back to the original theory. So this is why it's called the triality. Okay, it's a, it's the equivalence between three different phases or three different theories. Uh, to construct this zero one theory, we will start with some zero two theory uh, embedded in string theory. So it's uh, very convenient uh, to talk about uh, this uh, how the zero one how the zero two theory can be expressed in terms of the zero one superspace, okay? So for every zero two vector, it can be decomposed into a zero one vector and a zero one Fermi field. So in zero, so in zero two vector, you have gauge boson and then, and, and you also have a chiral fermion. 
it's a complex Fermi field. So you can think of this complex Fermi field become two real Fermi fields. Okay, one becomes the Majorana wild Fermi in the zero one vector. The other real Fermi becomes the one in the zero one Fermi multiplet. And then the two other, and then the two kinds of matter multiplets in zero two theory becomes its zero one counterparts. For every chiral, you have two scalar multiplets. For every zero two Fermi, you have two zero one Fermi fields, okay? And the Lagrangian of the zero two gauge theory can then be in, expressed into the zero one superspace, okay? Which uh, we we'll call it zero one superpotential. Uh, it's written here. Let 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 me explain this term. Okay, so let's first see the so the first term on the right hand side of this equation come from the gauge interaction of the zero two chiral multiplets. So I have inter so in, in my parent zero two gauge, gauge theory, I have interaction between zero two vector multiplets and zero two chiral uh, chiral multiplets. Okay, so it. So this can be decomposed into the interaction between a zero one vector and a zero one scalar. Also including term, also including the interaction between a zero one Fermi from the zero two vector. The interaction between these Fermi fields to the zero one scalar fields. Here I use the cap, uh, here I use the small i to denote the gauge group. So so when I write lambda i i here, I mean the zero one Fermi field come from the zero two vector multiplets corresponding to the gauge group i. And the small m here, I mean that all scalar fields come from the zero two chiral fields, which are charged and the gauge group i. So I rewrite the gauge interaction. I rewrite part of the gauge interaction of the parent zero two theory into zero one language, okay? And all the rest of the terms on the right-hand side is just the rewriting of the zero comma two G and E terms into the zero one G terms, okay? Uh, there is a infinite class of zero two bit theories can be embedded in string theory, okay? Uh, one, uh, oh, uh, one interesting way to engineer these theories is consider Tori Clavio Fofos, who's a Tori, who's geometric or, or like who, who's like information of this Clavio Fofold singularity is, is encoded in the Tori diagram. So it's a Tori variety and it also obey the Clavio condition. So it will be, so it, so it will be some three dimensional Tori diagrams. Okay. And uh, you can think of D1 brains probing this Clavio Fofold singularities as uh, the table here, okay? I have D1 brains extending on zero one directions. I have the other eight directions is um, covered by my Tori Clavio fourfold singularities. And then on the geometry side, I have the Tori diagram, which encoded like, uh, which specified vanishing cycles and other geometric information of my Tori Clavio fourfold. And on the gauge theory side, I can engineer, I, I can, I, I can like, Use the information of the toric diagram to engineer my gauge theories on the one brain's word volume. It will become it will be some zero comma two quiver gauge theories. Uh, uh, the notation here is that uh, for every gauge no, for every node, I have a U and gauge group. Okay, black line means chiral multiplet, red line means Fermi multiplet. So for the black line connecting on a single gauge node, I mean the chiral field transforming under the uh, adjoint representation of the UN gauge group, okay? And uh, to specify the theory explicitly, you need not only the quiver diagram, but also the substantial, I just uh, for, you know, for simplicity, I don't write down here. So the, 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 the punchline here is that you can like, uh, there is a full set of techniques or the tools we have, we can like go very easily back and forth from the gauge theory to the geometry, okay? Using these um, techniques in the target geometry and also this, engineering of the zero two theories. Okay, so if we start with D1 brains probing clavier fourfold and it's zero two theory on word volume. So uh, how can we break the supersymmetry from zero two to zero one so that we engineer the theory we want with like the minimal supersymmetry. Uh, we can use the spin seven manifolds, okay? So the spin seven manifolds 
is a AD Riemann manifold with the holonomy group spin seven. Uh, every spin seven geometry is equipped with a Cayley four form, which is a real self dual four form. Okay, one of the explicit constructions of this spin seven structure or the spin seven geometry is proposed by Joyce. Okay, so for every Clavier four fold, you start with a Clavier four fold. It um, e e equipped with with a, a globally well defined holomorphic four form and a killer for uh, and a killer form j okay so for every club or four form, you can always use these two forms to define a real form oh uh, sorry here is a typo here okay so on the left hand side of the equation i should only have this omega four but not four comma zero for every club or four form, you can always define a real self dual four form in terms of the holomorphic four form and the killer four form and by considering an anti-holomorphic evolution of this Clavier fourfold, which under which this real four form is invariant, and you quotient this Clavier fourfold by this anti-holomorphic evolution, you end up with a spin seven manifold whose KD four form is defined just by this real four form. Okay, so like you have a Clavier fourfold, you define an anti-holomorphic evolution, preserve this real four form you define, and then you take the quotient. You have a spin seven. So, so this is the trick. Okay. Okay. So based on Joyce construction, uh, the thing. So the uh, so the first step we do is that we consider D one green probing clubby or fourfold or Tori clubby fourfold, and we construct and and we look for the anti holomorphic evolutions of the clubby or fourfold, which give us the spin seven structure. We combine this anti holomorphic evolution with the world shape parity. So in the end, we'll have an oriented fold in string theory. Okay, by doing this quotient over the anti-holomorphic for oh, sorry, anti-holomorphic evolution combined with the watershed parity, we end up with the setup in string theory as D1 brings probing something we call spin seven oriented fold. Okay, because it's because it's an oriented fold and it's uh, and the geometric evolution of this oriented fold is the it's the evolution which leading to the spin seven structure. So that's how the name uh, comes from, okay? So this is the picture is a illustration for this uh, for this construction. Okay, so uh, how can we like uh, know that, okay, so now I do something like spin seven around for this in string theory, how do I know what is the corresponding action in the gauge theory, in the zero two gauge theory on my D1 brains? So, Every Tori club or four for the singularity can be uh, defined as some uh, generators among some relations. Okay. So the one, so, so the geometric evolution, anti holomorphic evolution in, in the geometry can be written as some anti holomorphic evolution, which acting on my generators, defining my club for four for singularities. Okay. And uh, you can compute the and uh, the corresponding zero two theories on D1 brains, you can compute this modular space and you and use Hubert series computation technique to extract the expression of the generators of, of the geometry in terms of the chiral field of the zero two gauge theories. Which means that if I have an anti holomorphic evolution on the chiral fields in my zero two theories. I can directly derive what is the geometric evolution on the generators of the clavier full fold. Okay, so you can go back and forth. So now the construction becomes not only at the geometry side, but, but also at the field theory side. Okay, on the geometry or on the string theory setup, we have D1 probing clavier full fold, take quotient by omega and sigma, omega is the world shaded parity, sigma is the anti-holomorphic evolution. We have D1 probing spin standard. And by using the generator's expression in terms of the chiral field, we know what we are doing in the gauge theory side, okay? So we have the anti-holomorphic evolution for chiral fields. And because we want is the Z2 symmetry of my gauge, of my parent gauge theory, theory so that I can gauge in the Z2, ending up with the oriented fold theory. So I have to find out how the Fermi field transformation so that this evolution is a Z2 symmetry for my parent zero two theories. And then I just uh, quotient by this field theoretic anti-holomorphic evolution. 
then I add up, sorry, then I add up with the zero one theories on D1 brains probing the clavio, sorry, probing the spin seven already fold. Okay. And here is an example. So consider the a complex clone over the Q101, which is some Tori Clavio. For fold, you can think of, okay, it is defined by these eight gen generators and nine relations. And uh, there are like two, zero, two, zero comma two phases on the one brains, probing this Clavio full fold singularity, which I called phase one, and uh, sorry, which I called phase A and phase S, I could, okay. And then by doing the same, uh, and by doing this geometric evolution and find the corresponding field theory evolution, I can end up with uh, these two zero one theories associated with the spin seven oriented field of Q101. And interestingly, after you constructed these two zero one theories, you found that they are exactly connected by the zero one triality, which is uh, the one we, uh, we introduced uh, a few minutes ago. Okay, so you've got five more minutes. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, so let, let's see this picture. Okay, so from the Q101 club, your full fold, I have two zero two gauge theories, or I have two zero comma two faces on the one brains. Okay, and they are connected by zero two triality. This is, this is something people previously know. And, uh, by using this spin seven oriented for quotient construction, we can construct uh, the two zero one theories coming from the two zero two faces. And by finding out what is the geometric evolution is, we know that what is the spin seven oriented field associated with this zero one faces. And then we found that, and then what we found is that uh, these two zero one theories are exactly connected by the zero one triality. If you act, if you act uh, the triality transformation on the gauge node two, okay. Here I use the green circle to denote the gauge group which is acted by the triality transformation. Okay, so this is so this spin seven oriented fold construction of the zero one gauge theories is give me exactly the geometric interpretation or a geometric understanding of how this zero one triality work. So here is another here is another example with a a uh, richer structure of the triality, okay? You can think of the uh, club your four fold Q11 mode Z2, okay? The toric diagram is below in this picture. There are 14 toric faces, there are 14 faces for this geometry. Here, I just choose five of them, okay? You see, I call these uh, five faces of, uh, uh, like the name is followed by some previous paper, okay? It's a D, E, L, J, H. This is just uh, the label for the different faces, okay? And I use different colors of arrow to denote what kind of triality transformation you need to connect these different zero to theory, okay? So from phase D to E, you do lights on the gauge, uh, you do lights on the gauge node colored green, okay? And you go from phase D to phase E, okay? And from phase E to G, you do lights on the gauge node colored purple. So this, this is how this picture uh, should be uh, understood. So from phase D to phase H is a kind of uh, tricky here because you need two steps of triality transformation. Okay, so you first dualize or you first make the triality transformation for the, on the gauge no, on the blue node. You, you, uh, then you go to the phase C, which I don't show the query here, okay? And you go from the phase C, you do it on the gauge node orange. Then you just end up with the phase H. Okay, so this is the triality web for zero two phases of the Q11 mode C2. And you can find that all these five phases admit a same geometric involution, which at the geo which at the field theory side corresponding to a Orient forward action that a Z2 folding with respect to the vertical face, sorry, to the vertical plane formed by the gauge group three, four, five, six. Okay, so I have for, for every face, I have eight gauge groups and I put one, two, seven, eight gauge group on the X or Y plane and I have three, four, five, six 
gauge node from a uh, vertical plane. So with respect to this vertical plane, you can like fold in this quiver. So this gives you a orange fold action on the field theory side. And all these five faces, you, you can check that they correspond, they admit the same kind of oriented fold action on the field theory or on the quiver diagram. And you can check that on the geometry side, they, they correspond to the same geometric notion, which means that they end up with the same spin seven already fold. But we but corresponding to the but with different zero comma one gauge theories from these different phases. So after you do the oriented fold construction of the zero one gauge theories, this is what you end up with. You have five zero comma one gauge theories corresponding to the same spin seven already fold of the Q11 mode C2 singularity. Okay. So from phase D, so the dualities or the triality transformations between D, E, L, J are exactly the zero comma one triality transformations defined by uh, defined by the, the, the defined by the rule we introduced for the SQCD case. Okay. But between phase D and H, it's uh, they are connected actually by a UN duality. So if you if you see like the gauge node one in this zero one theory, it's, it's actually a UN gauge group because it's come from two UN gauge group get identified in the parent zero two theory. So the triality or the or the triality transformation connected phase D and phase H is actually is a UN duality transformation or a UN triality transformation. This is something which is not realized previously in the zero one gauge theory, okay? So previously people talk about gauge zero one gauge theories, people always talk about like the SO gauge group, S SP gauge group, and the triality transformation on this kind of gauge groups. But here you can have some zero one theory with UN gauge group, which means that you have some complex meta field, or you can see this as some zero comma two meta fields with zero comma one super potential deformation, which give you the zero one gauge theories in the end. But these two zero one gauge theories can be connected by the zero two UN triality transformation. Okay. So this is something new. And uh, uh, we found from the this uh, spin semi artifold construction. Okay. And then let's move to the conclusion here. Okay. So we introduce a new background in string theory called spin seven manifold to engineer an infinite class of zero one theories. And this is uh, gives a very nice geometric realization of the idea that zero one theories can be thinking as the real slices of the zero two theories. And the zero one triality and even zero two triality, but coupled to the zero one deformation can be think of as the non-uniqueness of the few theories associated with the same spin seven manifold. And some future direction is here, okay? So for the subject duality, zero two triality, they can be associated with the Clabial man manifold and under the mirror symmetry of the Clabial, they all translate into some geometric transition, the same type of geometric transition, okay? So is there any similar transformation for the zero one triality for spin seven manifold? Another uh, uh, question is that, um, is there any um, deformation of the Clabial fourfold or spin seven geometry we can extract by a uh, investigate the dynamics in the field theory. Okay, this will be something like uh, in 4D, the n flavor equal to n color, you have the deformation of the modular space, okay? And another class of zero one theories we uh, plan to investigate is the, the D1 brain problem club you quotient by the anti-holomorphic evolution without any world shape parity. So this will end up with some UN01 triality, sorry, UN01 gauge theories, okay, with the, uh, you can think of this as the zero two theory with the zero one superpotential deformation, okay? And another class of zero one or zero two theories are constructed by a 60 SCFT compactification. So is there any connection between the theories we construct on the one brains to uh, the 60 theory compactification? And uh, there are many, many, many more to explore for these two leakage theories. Thank you so much. All right, let's thank Xingyang. Uh, thanks a lot for the very nice talk. Is there any is is there any question? Uh, okay, um, Ivana. 
Yes, hi. I mean, I, I saw nobody else was asking questions, so I might as well ask this one. Uh, so thanks for the talk, by the way. It's a very nice uh, paper. Uh, so I was wondering if uh, you've thought about uh, the possibility, si since this uh, minimal uh, n equals 0, 1 supersymmetry arises, well, si since you're interested in the IR of these uh, theories, um, there is the possibility in principle that you start from a non susy theory and, and the supersymmetry merges in the IR. And then you could have all of these uh, properties. Uh, have you thought about this possibility? Uh, you mean the starting point is some non susy theory? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, I, th I, th I think this is, a, I think what, what we did is a little bit different from this point of view. So what we think, so these zero one theories are actually, so like these theories on D1 brings probing this club R4 spin seven, they're actually the, they are the equivocate theory are actually the UV prohibitive equivocate theories on D1 brains. So, so far, we don't really know what is the infrared fixed point is. But for the D1 brains probing club or fourfold, you can try to compute its elliptic genus of that zero two gauge theories. You will find that you have some non trivial re results. So, it's natural to conjecture that, okay, there is some non trivial IR fixed point in the end. And you can try to check this UV equivocate theories, they are zero two triality or zero one triality between them. But so far, we don't um, we don't have a very clear picture of what is IRCFT look like in the end. Yeah. So you can think of this is as the RG, if you want to think of this RG flow of this kind of picture, you can think of that on D1 brain probably some clavier or full fold. So on the UV, you have this UV perturbative gauge theory. Sorry, UV perturbative equivocate theory, and then you flow to the infrared at intermediate stage. In the intermediate stage, the best description becomes some, you know, some type to be supergravity solution. And then you flow further to infrared, then you end up with some infrared fixed point at CFT, but which we don't know what it is now. So, yeah. Right. Well, okay, thanks. <laughs> right. Uh, let's thank Xinyang.